Uh, Gromago, thanks for your presentation. A few quick questions. Uh, Mr. Donlan, um, in Donnelly's coal yard in Galway last year, you weren't there at the time, it was closed, redundancies. Sligo this Christmas, um, the coal yard is closed and Bordemona involved in it. Um, Derry Fodda in the west of Ireland, which is the, the west, western side of the Shannon, uh, out of peak production. You talk about 150 jobs going. Um, I think you need to be honest to this committee. Those are redundancies. Those aren't jobs being replaced. Wind turbines don't replace jobs. I think you need to be uh, What? I've listened to you about Kildare, and that's good that you're going to keep your head office there. I've heard you talking about uh, you're going into Equa. That's a seven-year project. I've talked to your own people. May or may not work. Um, and you're also going growing herbs for medicines and that may or may not work. So we have no plan going into the future. What have you envisaged for west of the Shannon that has been good to you down through the years, um, where there's 50 to 60 jobs going on Derry Father at the moment, and absolutely no production west of the Shannon from next January on? Um, a place that gave you good workers and worked with you down through the years. Um, that's the first question. Uh, in the line of the biomass, uh, Mr. Shear, um, what is the carbon footprint of a tonne of biomass that's brought from Africa uh, or North Africa, brought from Australia or bought, brought from uh, parts of America that you're talking about? Give me the accurate um, carbon footprint per tonne. Thir third question is, you have talked about growing some here in Ireland. I've spoke to farmers that is in, in the scheme with you at the moment, in, in the biomass scheme. The facts are that if you're down south in Ireland to rent land for the dairy sector at the moment, it's 400 euro per acre. If you're in other parts, it may be two to 250. The biomass is not returning. Are you calling on the government to give a proper subsidy to that? Because realistically, the, fi the figures you are talking, you're in wonderland if you're thinking farmers are going to go down the biomass route um, that in, in parts of Ireland. And we have heard uh, about fuel security. We have heard the green agenda over the last number of years talk, telling everybody in this country, let's go green and we won't be importing. The facts are, and correct me if I'm wrong, in this biomass that you're going down, that we will be importing 60, between 65 over the next, between now and 2027, between um, 65 and 120 million of extra imports, money going out of the country because of the decision that you've taken in the last six months. Okay, uh, let, me, let me take the questions one by one. Uh, you know, what we announced in the last few weeks was a very difficult decision, and I don't want to sugarcoat it that we have a plan to replace all the jobs in the short term. And uh, that's the harsh realities we're, we're, we're dealing with. And that's why what we're trying to do in the short term is work with those affected employees and do it through a voluntary basis. So yes, some bogs will close. We're working with those. Yeah, yeah, we're working with those people and we're working with uh, the group of unions to say, well, if everyone doesn't want to take voluntary in that area, can we relocate them to another area? And we're trying to do this in its fairest measure way. But we don't have all the answers and it's not, and I don't want to dress it up that this is all fine and dandy. It is not. We're talking about 400 plus people losing their jobs and that's the harsh reality of decarbonisation hitting our, hitting our door. Uh, so I don't want to, 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 to do that. To, to, to dress that up. Now, as we develop these medium to long term jobs, they might and might not work. You're right, right? But we're going to give it our best shot to get them to work. And if they do work, we can deploy them in many areas. And that's, that's, but at the first, we need to see can we get them commercially viable? We're doing our pilots, we're doing our trials. And then if they work, there is, we can decide where they go. Why isn't there pilots west of the Shannon? Well, we've decided to put a pilot uh, in a particular area. And we actually, decided, the reason we put it in Mount Lucas was there was a wind farm there. We had road infrastructure and electric infrastructure. And it was the most cost-effective thing to do. It, and that was, that was based on no other reason than there's infrastructure there that we can drive in, we can, we can use the infrastructure from that. And we're, we, have, we have made no decision on west east of Shannon. We're very, and we, we'll, we, we'll, we'll keep that in mind as, as we go forward. Um, I think growing biomass in Ireland, you're right, is challenged. And yes, it needs further support from the government. We are working with the Department of Agriculture. Yes, it needs a step up. And I, I, would, I would share your concern that importing it doesn't make uh, sense. But as part of the just transition, 
we don't have any other option in the short to medium term. We would love to see it uh, developed here and be 100% indigenous. We don't see that happening anytime soon. We're working hard on it, but I think, yeah, is, if we can get improved grant schemes uh, uh, and make it com uh, commercially viable for the agriculture area, um, yeah, we think uh, that that's something that we can all work on together. We're, we're, we're with you on that. And on, and on the carbon footprint of biomass, do you, do you have that to hand, uh, Charles? No, I, I, I don't, but in, in principle I can tell you, for biomass to be sustainable, it has to have a carbon, uh, what's a carbon footprint for a supply chain. Obviously, it's, there, there's energy spent in getting it, getting it harvested, getting it processed, if you're chipping it up, if you're, if you're moving it around. That has to be low, a certain percentage compared with what the Europeans call a fossil fuel comparator. And that's a set figure, set for all, everybody across Europe has that G. You don't compare it with what the fuel you're replacing, it doesn't get compared against peat, it gets compared against what's effectively an average emission for the European grid, based on gas and coal plants in, on the European system. Uh, it's 183 megajoules. Just, can, I, can I just yeah. go in on one thing? What you're saying, so is gas and coal obviously is to be, well, uh, gas and coal, coal has to be brought from one place to the other. Yeah. So you're comparing, it. if you have your peat in the bog below in the Midlands, yeah. and you're bringing it in by the, your little train into the, the different places. Are you telling me that you're not allowed to compare it to that, that you have to compare it to gas and coal? Yeah, that's, that's the rules of the game. They, 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 that works the European out... Union right. has gone mad if that's no, the case. That works out at about... It, it isn't compared per tonne of that, it's compared per megawatt hour of electricity. That works out at you know, the fossil fuel compared to 650 kilos of carbon per, per megawatt hour. We have to be less than 70% of that, which is about 200 kilos of CO2 per megawatt hour. So in other words, if biomass is less than that, it's deemed effectively to be carbon neutral. It doesn't mean it is carbon neutral, it's just deemed to be carbon neutral. What is peat if you bring it from right beside the station? You mean the peat... Oh, Pete, 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 of carbon per megawatt hour is what Pete would be. That's not counting the transports. The transport part is quite small. Could you send us those figures, uh, Mr. Shear, with a yeah. possible? Yeah, 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 we can. Thank you.